Um, so now let's talk about AI, um, the use cases, right? Um, so on, if you look at um, the third chapter on the on the uh, introduction to Tiny ML book, uh, third chapter is devoted to AI speak, essentially, which talks about how do you convert the gestures um, to spoken language. So, for example, this animation is saying, I love you. Um, and that's the gesture that, uh, you know, if you have a sensor in, in your in your fingertips, let, let's say uh, accelerometer or gyroscope embedded inside or on your fingertips, and this gesture is made, the machine learning will spot that pattern and quickly convert that into spoke, spoken language. Um, and that's the idea. The idea is to give um, voice to the 70 million mute population, you know, on the planet. So how do we go about? By the way, you might want to note this URL, which is essentially you can go on it, um, sign up um, for a free account and look at the entire sensor app. The so we have a first question. Sure. Okay, so this is on your screen. Mm -hmm. I can't it's see my screen. Can you? Okay, okay. So this is from some Lavanya girl, and she's asking, uh, sir, isn't it difficult with tiny ML to determine when data paths and pre-processing steps can vary significantly between devices? Um, so data paths meaning sensors. Um, yeah, so you can correct, connect different sensors, right? And that's the beauty of it. Like you can connect a camera or, 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 or a microphone. So that's one part. Other variation of data is essentially how do you process this data to create the application. Um, it is true that for every sensor, you will have to have a sense as to what is the best methodology to use that kind of data that's coming from these sensors. For example, um, your your cameras, they need to be converted to some kind of a matrix, uh, which in data science terms called NCHW, which is a sort of four dimensional tensor. Uh, for an audio waveform, it needs to be analyzed into some kind of a frequency transform. Uh, so it depends on the application. So there are these two I wouldn't call them difficulty. These these are you know uh, solved sciences. There are it's just a, a skill that you have to pick up uh, as a as a data scientist or tiny machine learning engineer um, and add to your computer science or electronics knowledge. Like Doctor uh, you know Charu said in the beginning that it's not just you know electronics electrical. Or computer science, mechanical, you know, and the other engineering, they're coming together to create one application. And that's the beauty of engineering, right? You know, an engineer does not care where the solution comes from, whether it's coming from mathematics or physics or some other uh, basic sciences, fundamental sciences. He's focused into creating something that makes the world, world better, right? So, in these three, four branches, um, in tiny ml are fused to give you a sense of a smart application so correct it is somewhat difficult but it's a solved uh, science um, and it's just a skill that you have to pick up right okay so thank you so we'll wait uh, you can continue with your slides and as soon as we have our next question we'll again ask you though it'll be pleasure so yeah uh, please keep your questions coming um, so this um, essentially, this is the flow, I mean, at a very high level. You have the accelerometer and gyroscope data, which is fed to a neural network. And neural network will predict top five uh, words that what is the possibility of this, um, you know, uh, sound waveform matching closer to this word. And we pick the top one and then the next word predictor. So, for example, when you type in something in the Google, Google is always predicting ahead as to what you're going to type, right? And it's similar to that. Uh, algorithm is similar to that. And then once it is sort of confirmed, then we convert the entire sentence to a speech and say. So, it's as simple as that. Um, your, your network is shown on the lower 
uh, part of the steam, which is essentially a few operators. Uh, you can make it more complex. This is this works for five words, but if your word goes to become more complex, like 5,000, typically 500 to 2,000 is a good starting vocab for anybody. I mean, we don't speak more than five to 8,000 words in our daily spoken language. So those words are limited. And the entire lexicon, the dictionary has about half a million um, words. So the science for computing and converting these audio waveforms to sentences is somewhat limited. It's not, it's not like space where you have uh, the, the, the space is expanding forever kind of a problem. It's a limited problem set that we are dealing with.